out in University Park doing a service call. And the call was that the uh, gate operator uh, sometimes won't close. It'll go halfway, won't close, go halfway, won't close. And my thought was that the one of these wires were loose. And sure enough, both of them were loose. Uh, one just fell out while I uh, was messing with it. And the other one, I don't know how, was almost already out. So I'm going to twist these. And I bet these are cranked all the way down. Nope, they're not turned at all. Well, I mean, they're somewhat turned. See, oh no, that one's not turned at all. So, they just didn't, they, they just didn't plug them in and twist them. So that should be the issue. So we'll get that working. But whoever put this in did a nice job. That is just so good looking right there. And they did it right. They spaced it out from the housing. Some of this is the only part about that is this is sharp. And this is interior grade wire. So I'll plug these two in and, and confirm it. that's the issue. I replaced a EMX, I think it's a IRB monitor 4XT or something like that. And replaced it with replaced it with this IRB RET. This is kind of the standard photo eye that I'm going with over 20 feet in uh, length. Um, it is a UL325 photo eye and um, it's it's nice that it's not a double head uh, if you don't need the range um, you can uh, just run a wire run down one side which is where the, what the problem that we were having was we had this interior grade wire back here it was going through this uh, metal conduit which is going back through the track so it's probably just sitting in water underneath there and um, one of the wires is damaged um, at least that's what I diagnosed it as because that's all I could find when we took the photo eye out of the circuit uh, everything worked fine for a little while and this was a logical step up um, and uh, an installation that way we didn't have to replace the wire and um, it's uh, it's a perfect retrofit so we got one more photo eye out here in University Park installed ready to go so I just installed this photo eye the other day and I got a call from the customer saying that the gate's not working. So just to confirm all my stuff is mounted correctly and everything, you know, that's good. I'm happy with that. I uh, just come to visibly take a look at it. I was kind of perplexed. I was like, well, you know, I knew I put everything in right um, and everything was working and I'm real happy with how these, uh, these photo eyes work but she said that the gate wasn't closing and we've just went through a whole diagnostic period that took you know a couple weeks just to confirm that it was the old photo eye that was giving us the problem and not the control board and uh, we got that solved and sure enough she calls me a couple weeks later and says you know it's not working so it's pretty obvious if you've ever put a photo eye in and you know a little bit about alignment that the photo eye shooting up like that is not going to hit the reflector right there. So she said that she had some vendors at her house doing something and they were here for a long period of time and that there might have been some something that happened there and it's pretty obvious that it got bent and that takes a lot to bend that. So I'm going to take my channel locks and bend it back down and I can already hear that the photo eye came into alignment and then back out so there's tension still on there so with these typically you're doing the alignment down there well I shouldn't say typically but what I like to do is mount this get everything tightened down and then put my photo eye down there or the reflector down there exactly within the center of a two foot by two foot by two foot by two foot circle and put it right dead center um, this case we're gonna have to adjust the photo eye um, to match down there so photo eye left to right is good so I'm not worried about that I'm just worried about getting it back down and you know steel has kind of a memory or at least that's what they say I want to um, get that aligned but if I can touch it like that Make sure all my screws are tight down here. 
my bolts rather, not screws. Yeah, that's tight. Yeah, that's tight as well too. Take a 7 16th wrench on this and to get them tight, but I was just gonna bend it back, but it looks a little bit loose. I mean, that's about as hard as I can tighten. Without worrying about breaking the bolt. So, it's really not that loose. Yeah, that one's, that's as tight as it'll get. So that's good, I'm just looking at it. Maybe they they whacked it so hard that this, this steel has gotten a little softer than it normally is. No, it looks it looks to be in pretty good shape. So the way that I like to do this to make sure I got it pretty good uh, in the alignment is I go left to right and see if I can get it to trip. Okay, it's kind of hard to see because, so, so I go left to right, all right, so we don't have any problem there, and then I go up and down, okay? So I'm going up, and it's getting out of alignment, but when I go down, it's not. So I think we can still bend this down a little bit more. Now, I'll just get it back just a little bit on that sweet spot. I've got four bolts on it, so I'm real happy with that. Just for the fun of it, let's just make sure those are tight. Or at least just, I want to see that yeah, they didn't get loose. Maybe they broke one. Oh, they broke one. Maybe they broke more than one. Or when I say they, I don't know who if anybody did or not, but that obviously is snapped. See, again, you would just take a 5 16 nut driver and grab a hold of this. But I was just going to adjust it, but it just feels not right. That one's tight. All right, so I'm going to go get my 5 16 nut driver and, and um, get a new screw and screw that in. But that was just snapped right off. Okay, um, I did notice this mark on top of the photo eye, so that's a good likelihood that uh, they, when they were backing up, you can see that there's tire marks right there, tire marks there. <clears throat> it could quite possibly be that when they were backing up, they, they hit it, but that's just speculation. The only reason why I'm concerned about that is past performance. If I come up to 10 of these and they're all bent like that, then I need to know that this bracket's not strong. I'm not trying to establish liability. Liability, for the most part, for us doesn't matter. It's only for the end user, and we have no interest in whether the end user um, has to pay for it or a vendor has to pay for it or whatever. It doesn't matter. The only thing that we need to do is make sure that the gate operates sa safely and that we installed it properly. Um, Overall, I mean, there could be some other little things that we need to do. So the thing that I'm concerned about is you see how we block it. The LEDs go off when I block it, and uh, you may not be able to see that. But anyways, so the LEDs go off when I block it is I want to be able to push it up and down, and those LEDs not go off and push it left and right. So that means it has a re relatively good tolerance of uh, wind or being bumped or whatever. So um, we had a uh, broken uh, bolt as well, too and um, that could have been it that could have been an issue it was down here at the bottom and the bottom would have had the most um if you will leverage uh towards it so having that broken is not a surprise 
um, but uh, having the scuff mark on here and uh, the fact that it was bent straight backwards is cause for concern. So the lens is not scratched, which is a good thing, so there's probably no permanent damage. Okay, got the gate closed. It's not getting out of alignment with just a little bit of movement, and the reflector was good. It didn't get damaged or anything. So the gate's closed. We're good to go. Let's go on to the next one.